Just go ahead and spend a minute or two setting the stage, telling us what grade level, what class, things like that. Okay, so my lesson is about basic Mendelian genetics, and it's supposed to be set for a high school biology one class, so I think that that's usually like freshmen or sophomores around that level. Um, and I placed this lesson kind of in a sequence of genetics lessons I would have already done in kind of a basic introduction to DNA. Um, and already talked about replication, mitosis, and meiosis. Um, and then the kind of outline for the lesson, we do a little warm up, recalling some of the things from the last lesson, um, especially the definition of a gene, because that would be really important here. Um, and then you'll see the introduction um, portion that I'm going to do that focuses a lot on Mendel's first law. And then they'll be breaking out into partners to do a kind of square worksheet that I had created. Um, and then we'll be coming back together to talk about his second law, because that requires dihybrid crosses, so I wanted to get him really comfortable with kind of squares first. Um, and then just a little review, and I also had a homework worksheet that would go home with them to make sure that they remember everything so when we come back and do more genetics the next day. Okay. All right. Um, so our main topic today is heredity. And heredity is the um, scientific definition is the passing of genetic information from one generation to the next generation. And this is a topic that applies to all different kinds of organisms, especially humans. You can think about yourself like if anybody's ever told you, oh, you know, you have your grandmother's smile, or you have your father's eyes, you know. There's a lot of little traits that we see a lot of times in parents that show up in their offspring also. Um, and so there's a whole field of science that deals with studying heredity, and that's known as genetics. And as with a lot of different fields in science, there's one scientist that's kind of thought of as the father of genetics. His name is Gregor Mendel, and he was an Augustinian monk who lived in the 1800s. And so he's lived, he was over in Europe in the area that we kind of know of as Austria nowadays. And as a monk, he had a lot of time to do some scientific endeavors. He also kept bees, which is kind of interesting. But um, So what he really liked to work with was pea plants. He was a botanist. He loved his pea plants. And he worked with them for years and years and years, gathering lots and lots of data. Um, and at the time, people were kind of starting to think about genetics. And they were saying, you know, they noticed that you know parents look like their kids. And so the big theory that everybody had at the time was called the blending theory of inheritance. And that was that, you know, parents, their genes, or they didn't really know. There was no microscopes then. So they didn't know about the chromosomes that we've talked about before, mitosis and meiosis. But they kind of knew that there was something that parents give to their kids that make them look like them. And so they thought that these things all blended together and that was the main theory. But Gregor Mendel had worked with his pea plants for a very long time, and he noticed some things that he thought were a little bit different. Um, and he looked a lot of times in plants. I mean, like in humans, if you talk about hair color or eye color, there's a lot of different choices. But like in, in his pea plants, there was a lot of different traits where there was only two choices. So he looked at their color of flowers, and pea plants either had purple flowers or they had white flowers. They never had anything else. And he looked at their height, and he would get short plants, and he would get tall plants, but he would never get anything in between. So he started thinking about it and said, you know, if all this stuff is blending together, you know, when I have white flowers and purple flowers, they should give me light purple flowers, but they don't. I either get the same color purple or the same color white all the time. And so he, he didn't call them genes like we do today didn't know about that, but he said each of these parents has their own, what he called factors, and they contribute these factors to their young, and that there's two different types of factors for all these traits, and so what we call them now is we call them alleles, and alleles are the different versions of each gene, and now remember we learned before about how, you know, like in humans, and the same is true in pea plants, you have two copies of every gene in your body, so you have two different you get one from your mom and one from your dad. Um, and so they're, the 
these different versions of the same genes called alleles. Um, and uh, your alleles, there's always going to be, for these two types, one of them is going to be the dominant allele, and the other one is going to be recessive. And so if you think about that word dominant, that's kind of like, makes you think of something strong and big, maybe. So if you have a dominant allele and a recessive allele, the dominant allele will always mask the recessive allele if you have one of each. So if we're talking about pea plants, and I told you before, they have purple flowers, and they have white flowers. And so what he discovered after his years and years of working with pea plants is that the purple peas are dominant to the white in the flower. So he decided to represent purple with a big pea and white with a little pea. And so if you think now, um, every plant is going to have two copies of a flower. So, there's some different possibilities that you can have um, for what they would look like. So they can have two big P alleles. They can have one big P and one little P. Or they can have two little P's. Um, so now this brings us to another concept, which um, when you look at these, um, the, so an organism's genotype is the organism's genetic data. So if you want to know the genotype of this plant, well, it has two big P alleles. Um, and then the phenotype um, are the physical characteristics that, that an organism expresses. So like, if you look at this, because it has two dominant alleles, this would be a purple plant. Um, and then if you look at the next plant, it has a different genotype because it has one dominant allele and one recessive. But when you talk about phenotype, because the dominant allele masks the recessive, it is also going to be a purple plant. So it's going to look just the same as the first plant meaning it's going to have the same phenotype because it'll have the same physical characteristics. This plant down here just has the two recessive alleles, so it will be white. And it will have a different phenotype and a different genotype. And now, the big words that we use to talk about genotypes sometimes are heterozygous and homozygous. And if you think, you know, those are kind of big words, but the root of those words, homo means the same. And you see that kind of all over the place. So if you had two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles, you'd be called either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Whereas this guy in the middle who has two different alleles, he's heterozygous. Hetero means different. Um, and so, um, so Greg Mendel, back to his key plans, he spent a lot of time looking at these pea plants and collecting data. And so he needed a good tool for keeping track of these. Because what he would do is he would take different pea plants and he would pollinate them with each other to make them have different babies. Um, so he had to keep track of all his crosses. So a really good tool for keeping track of these crosses is called the Clement Square. What it is basically you need to draw a big square like this. And now, you're going to have your two plants that you're crossing, and you're going to know the genotypes for each. So what Greg Mendel started with is he started with really pure breeding purple plants and really pure breeding white plants. So his purple plants were homozygous dominant plants, so they had two big P alleles. And his white plants were recessive, homozygous recessive. So they had two little P alleles. Called these his parental generation, his P generation. So he bred them all together, and what he found was he always got purple flowers. And if you look at this, you can think because these plants are giving their alleles to their offspring, and all that they have to give is a big bee. All follow the column now. And over here, this plant is also giving an allele to the offspring, and what it has to give is a little bee. Follow these little pieces from the side all the way across. And as you can see, we have 
four offspring here, they would all have the same genotype and they would all have the same phenotype. They would all be purple flowers. Well, Greg Mendel loved his piece, so he wasn't satisfied to stop after one generation. He wanted to see what happened if he kept going. So then, what he did next was he took those offspring, he did another cross. Gregor Mendel figured this out. 